Yeah. You know, my publishers would always be like, this no, is no pun intended. Of, <laughs> this is kind of you mm. writing horror with fucking. Right. You're not really writing erotica. You're kind of. Your heart right. was in the horror, not the. That's always the, the sexiest thing. So. Right. But I always saw horror and erotica as sisters, you know, or yeah, family. I, right, right, right. I never saw them as distinctly separate, but I actually was thinking um, when you were talking about the, the Warp Tour, how you realized it wasn't your your world, your audience. I went to a convention and had the same experience that you did, where I was sitting on all these panels discussing various aspects of erotica, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it clicked in my head. I'm like, this is absolutely not anything that I need to be involved in. I right. think I was looking out in an audience where somebody was dressed as a cat, somebody was dressed as a dog, <laughs> and they were fighting <laughs> because they were cats and dogs, pretending to be a cat. No! Oh, wow. Um, and then the panel was about fetish, writing about fetishes in erotica, mm-hmm. and I suddenly realized that nobody on the panel had ever experienced the fetishes they were writing about so I had this kind of except for you except for me well if I was going to write about it I yeah. would have experienced it yeah so I had this illusion like maybe you did and I wonder if you had the same experience where all of a sudden the curtain parted and I was like this is like the man behind the curtain nobody really knows what they're talking about here and they're just writing about their fantasies where I've lived a rather erotic life and if I think if I was going to write about a certain thing I would know about it Mm-hmm. So I thought everybody was doing that. And so I don't know if you had that moment where you're like, wow, this was like a kind of Wizard of Oz moment where you're like, there's the man behind the curtain kind of. Yeah, well, it wasn't, yeah. Well, I can relate to you. I can relate to both your stories because you were asking me how it was in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And doing comedy in Vegas, uh, what works with, with uh, and and let me just preface this by saying, once you've established yourself, your audience goes to you in Vegas. Right. I had not established myself yet, so I was going to the audience. The audience was not, it was not where I wanted my comedy to go. Right. And I could feel it regressing, which is why I'm back in L.A. I could is there much of a goth anymore. scene in Vegas? It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Uh, yeah. And I, I, you know, there's me and a couple other people out there. No, but there was... There's, there's a couple Four. of them. Him, him and Pia Zadora. Actually, Four I never, people dressed I never, in black in the middle of the desert. I never Penguins found, in the desert. I never, I never found the goth scene in New Orleans, oddly enough. I know it was. I know it's there. Hmm. I forgot you moved there. In the I moved to New Orleans yeah. first, and then I moved to Vegas. I never saw much of a goth scene in New Orleans either. I only found one rock bar there, but I was only there. I've only been there sporadically because my yeah. cousin lives out there. It's a lot of rock bars, but. Uh, I mostly never, jazz bars. Yeah, mostly jazz bars, but yeah. you can find some. And, yeah. and, and there's rock nights at the jazz bars. Right, but, but I mean, like, there was only one old school rock and roll bar. Well, you know what's big there now is karaoke, oddly enough. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 sadly enough, so so you, you're out. So you got out of the uh, the erotic writing. Right. And so uh, so the, and, and these tales, you were kind of transitioning last time I talked to you, because you like to you like to set things in the past. Right. You like historical mm-hmm. horror, so mm-hmm. so after Lily, what did you do? What did you? You know, after Lily, I wrote. Um, so what happened was, after all of my publishers closed, I had to kind of rethink what I was going to do. I decided that the stories were worth. I would just wanted them out in print, so I started submitting them to other publishers. They all got republished. Um, Lily is now in its third. That's great. Publication. Uh, um, and then Lavender got picked up, and that went out fairly quickly. And then she, then two publishers came in and kind of just started taking all of my back catalog and republishing it. Um, my last, my full novel, Velvet, which was a historical erotica, um, came out again in print, which was nice to see that. Um, and it, it was really just refreshing to be able to let it go and to go back into the story that I'm editing now, which is going to be a trilogy, it was such a, so freeing for me to delete all of the sex scenes that I just, I can't write the word cock or cum or, I just can't write it again. Do you know what I mean? It was not, it's not where my writing is. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of, like you with, and and you, um, I kind of kept forcing myself to fit this square peg into a round hole. And I was like, why am I doing this? Because every time you're doing that, the shavings from the grind are taking more and more away from what you're really trying to do. I'm curious if 
because I read this in the foreword of, um, I think it's called Little Birds, uh, one of the NIEC men books, mm. um, which we were t- actually talking yeah. about earlier. Um, it says that the more she wrote about sex, um, because she was getting paid for it, the more it became a job, the less erotic it became. Like, it actually sort of desexualized. God, that happened to me a long time ago. I think when I was working in porn, and I went to my first porn set, and I saw a woman being double penetrated on a couch while another woman was eating guacamole out of a bowl of (laughs) top. An inch oh away from God. her watching. It is pro- possibly the most. Dave, un- cover your ears, will you? It was probably the most <laughs> unsexual um, experience of my life, and I found nothing erotic about it. I um, not even the guacamole. The, <laughs> and that's what I remember. Everybody loves most. avocados. And I, they loved it. Um, I just found. <laughs> I, found I think said avocado. I saw a light go on, but I, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll skip that for now. I just found all of it. You know, I've always worked in either sex or food or. Um, and writing, those have been my three p- kind of passions. And um, you reach a point with the sex where you're just like, I'm, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want, I don't want to be around it. I mean, because you, you just reach a point where you're like, I'm good. I've seen everything I need to see. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not. So what you're saying is, was it desexualized? Absolutely. Right. And then you become even more bitter when you realize the people who are reading it, or the other people who are writing it, most of them are not living what they're writing. And I don't know why I had that con- misconception. That's kind of a big misconception. I kind of assumed the woman who wrote Fifty Shades of Grey, I kind of had this idea that she might have lived hmm. some of that. And of course she didn't, or maybe she did. I don't know. But, you know, I had a, a woman confront me at a book signing where she said, well, you know, we're writers. We make stuff up. She goes, right. there's no vampires. So I said, yes, but if there is one, I'm going to assume they know more about being a vampire than I do. Right. Yeah. Well, the, and you're going to fuck him. Right. Probably. Right. Well, the, yeah. the one with <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, I don't know if she knows about s and but the white wine with ice, that's from her life. You know that. <laughs> the white wine with ice. Because right. we, we were talking about it. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't read. No, 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 no. no. She, uh, uh, we were talking, I was talking to Savannah outside. She's like, uh, it's, uh, it's just some part where he shows up with white wine with ice. I'm like, maybe that's part of the torture. Yeah, my friend, I have a friend, and we like to go to the Discount, discount Theater in Pasadena oh, okay. and see movies once nice. they've been out for a while. Um, we did that with all the Fifty Shades of Grey. Honestly, after the first one, we got real depressed, because in the second one, he's like, I'm only into you because you look like my mom. And we were like, can't come back from that, dude. <laughs> so did you guys did you guys know that Fifty Shades is Twilight fan fiction, I which makes me want to scream even more? Oh. I, I did know that. Uh, I checked it out from the library, but I didn't get around to, to watching it. I, I'd watch it. I, I'm curious. but It was truly... Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? I thought the sex scenes were pretty good, but the the dialogue and the plot was so ludicrous, well, and, and the dude is so insane, and you're always <laughs> like, this dingus is going to murder this bitch. So it's kind of like a Lifetime movie. It's kind of like a Lifetime movie. I mean, there's that saying, you know, right. if, if Christian Grey lived in a trailer rather than in a, right. you know... <laughs> own, rather than owning a building, then it would just be an episode of Criminal Minds. Basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, th- uh, th- can you make a living as a, as a writer? I Still? I, yeah, I mean, I don't know in that genre if you can. I mean, the... the I mean, just, just period. In just general? Like, yeah. I don't know. I've done, you know, I haven't been able to completely support myself on my writing, but that would be my goal eventually. I don't, I don't know, because now I'm right. kind of back in the beginning of all of it and trying right. to see what it's going to be like in the horror genre. I mean... Next time you're in Pasadena, come and call me because I'll live in there and I'll come and see a cheap movie with you. Oh, that sounds great. I mean, I think I think what what bothered me about Fifty Shades and even Twilight, and this relates back to something that you were saying too, is I think, um, you go, you know, Fifty Shades comes out and all of a sudden it's like they invented this invented erotica, and then you go to Target and they're like, well, if you love Fifty Shades, you love these books, and it's the Sleeping Beauty books from Anne Rice, which came out in 1978 right. and are genius. <laughs> Probably the only erotic I've ever read. Really? Um, I think they're beautifully done, I, and I'm not a big, a huge fan of her, even, mm-hmm. but that erotica was really well done. And I'm like, wait a minute. Well, you they know. definitely play with submission and domination. Right. That's the whole, that's the whole but thing. But it kind of is like, well, you know, like when Twilight come out, they're like, have you ever heard of Dracula? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, oh. so you don't yeah. even compare. You don't even know Bram Stoker. Yeah, Ugh. you know, so they act like this came out and invented. It's, 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 that's that's just amazing that somebody from Team Edward didn't know who Dracula was. Yeah, it's terrifying. Wow. But what, I mean, what are you gonna do? I, I, 
I, I, I have seen the, the Twilight movies. That's neither here nor there. I've seen actually UV gl uh, glitter 